Hello and welcome to another coaching video and in this one we have a Diamond Evelyn versus a Diamond Viego. Now this Evelyn, however, was master in split one and currently is coin flipped all the way back down to Diamond 3 and is pretty much stuck in Diamond wondering what's going on. Essentially, you've got two things that could be happening. Firstly is obviously you're spam playing when you're tilted and you're kind of not doing sets of five and you lose one, you lose two, you keep going. That's a playing issue and you just have to recognize, hey, look, maybe I should stop after two losses. Alternatively, there's also a gameplay issue that we're going to resolve in this video. So, Evelyn versus Viego. He gets leashed. We start leashless. Deep board here by the Kled, as expected, against the Rumble. We got the Talia versus Malzahar. And obviously, we've got Karthus support with a Zaya against Rokan and an Ezreal. The Karthus died level 1. The Rokan got the kill, so nothing that really affects us as junglers. But, you know, when the Viego is doing... Ooh, here we go. Let's have a look at the cross time. It's always something we like to talk about when people want Master Tier. You gotta know when you're crossing 223. The best you could do there is around 219. So, guys are within touching distance. The Evelyn, on the other hand, here is now crossing. Obviously, Leashless at 231. So, when you know these kinds of things, like, hey, Viego is gonna cross at around 219, 220. He got a leash. I have to factor this in. Clyde's gonna have prior theory over the... Uh, the Remus. The Rumble. But... This could be yankable, right? And Rumble with this double stack slow in the E and this max HP now. This is a lane we could still, in theory, kill decently. The question is, can we do this with the Viego around the corner threatening us? So, we're going to finish off our Grump here. We're paying attention to the lanes. Obviously, as always, shoving up Ezreal Rakan against the Sakaitha support. And uh, now this is crashing. So, this guy can either just back to base to avoid the gank. Hey, who knew you could do that? And he's already warded. So he's protecting himself. Everyone will know this and basically say, okay, he's going to use his TP. I'm going to have an RNG scuttle down on the bottom side. The Viego is still really slow to finish. The problem here is I don't like hitting the scuttle, the scuttle crab. I don't like hitting the scry's bloom down. Think about it. If you want help implementing this information into your own game, I have a free jungle improvement resource as well as a dedicated program where we have jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching VOD libraries that has weekly free video content seen nowhere else as well as Q&As and patch note rundowns, as well as a private jungle discord. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's converting junglers to gold, to emerald, to diamond, to master plus. If you want to climb faster than anyone you know, jungle diff every game you play, click the link below or head to vakayu.gg. Think about it. Why hit down? In what universe is an enemy jungle 229 coming from this direction? It's insanely unlikely, especially since this wave is pushed up and he might expect you to be ganking. The cloud has obviously gone back to base, right? Warded, back to base, will utilize himself running up here. He's not even going to use a TP, obviously. Don't need to in this particular case. Hit this up. And now if your rumble was shoving, right? If your rumble was shoving and you kind of guess that the enemy jungle is going to full clear and then gank around the corner... This Grisman shows you that as well, so you know, hey, I can counter gank this, or hey, I should just do the Scuttle Crab. Being it down in this particular case doesn't do anything. Nothing, in fact, because you know the Tilly has got prior here, you know the uh, Malzar's just going to go back to base, you know the vehicle is coming from the top side, there's no way he's cutting down here. Zero value gained. And if you hit this up here, and now you see the vehicle's maybe doing it, like, I know that's what we're looking for here, but I feel like your eyes can kind of give that away, but you're against a Viego. Not a Karthus, not a Fiddlesticks, not a champion that's going to be full clearing under this 325-329 minute marker. So you know that the guy is going to be in the area, he's not going to be on this. I prefer to hit up to see where they could be, and then obviously I'm probably not even going to go for this anyway, right? As soon as you see Rumble doing this, pushing in with Clud potentially using TP, who the hell knows what these guys do even though they don't need to, obviously in this case a good decision, it's still pretty common for you to see them use it, right? And then Talia still here, Malzahar's in base, uses his TP... Are we really even going to go for this anyway? No. So we can obviously just go back to base, go to Dark Seal, and not do something with the bottom scuttle. Here now, because Malzahar has TP and the Talia is lower mana, and we have bottom lane prior, this will be free for us anyway. And now because we have itemization advantage, this guy wastes his time, diamond level stuff, I don't know, like, take it, go back to base, you're not cutting off the scuttle crab. She can now go into his jungle here, ward this deep. Now if we just go back to base, right, sooner... Ah, he cancelled. Yeah, it's good by him. He knows what was going on. He could see what was going on. It's like, ah, uh, you know what? If I actually base here, I'm probably going to lose my Grom, so I should stay. Uh, because obviously you can kind of predict those things in this, in this, in this elo. And the bottom lane roam up, and we're able to not get the Grom, but the Viega will die for it. Now imagine if we were doing this with the Dark Seal. See what I'm saying? Hit the microphone. You see what I'm saying? This is where it's just... Such an important concept. All right, look, I'm gonna hit it up to see where he is. I know I want to kind of check if this is the case, but I'm I'm much more like 
they're coming, so I better see them coming. Maybe I can snack it and get out, or no mid lane prior base. Dark Seal. Now I'm out on the map here. I know I can get this guaranteed because I went to base as soon as I finished this right up. Yeah, I don't have to waste any more time. I hit this and I go back to base. Show up here, got a Dark Seal. We do this invade here, our, our bottom lane rotate with us, we kill the vehicle, all of this good stuff as well. Now we got some stacks in the Dark Seal, and obviously we can take the Wolf Camp as well. Lower death timers as well, just pay attention to this. Karth is roaming topside to try and kill the Rumble, so this is free for us. Now the vehicle is in a really bad spot. So it has worked out for us in the same kind of capacity, but it also could not have. You see what I'm saying? It, it, it also could not have. Talia is out of mana. Viego now will have to go for his five minute Raptor Pit thing. This is gone, guy. It's long gone. Your next play is going into this and trying to salvage some of this because Evelyn now has two decisions to make. Do I stay and do these camps right now? Or is Viego going to go straight up to this encounter jungle me before he does the Raptors? In which case, Rukan roams to help us. Rukan shows you everything you need to know. 5 minute 23 on the Grump as well. Huge. Huge, huge, huge movement by the Rukan here. Really helping the Evelyn out a lot. But again, not... Not huge, right? We're talking details here. We're talking details. I know why you hit the Scry's Bomb down. I understand the whole concept. Don't worry. It's just kind of what I'm thinking in terms of timers. Like, where am I going to get the best usage of it? Now, Viego's obviously going over here. We see the pings that have gone from the Rakan and says, hey, you're taking the Wolf Camp. This is good run by the support. Nice flash out there by the Malzahar. We get the full charm off. Boom. Another kill. Imagine if we were doing it with a Dark Seal and now not doing it with nothing in our pocket and again risking so much by staying out this long without spending any gold. Huge. Definitely big. Still seeing people stay out way too long because the camps at level 5, like these camps are level 5, right? So these camps have the... Move that down there. These camps have the uh, the shift in HP. Level 4 camps are still as they used to be. Level 1 camps, except, except from Raptors, the large Raptors, the same as it used to be. But the level 5 camps afterwards, way more HP. You want itemization. You want to be able to, to do these camps quickly, all right? Now the Viego has no other place to go other than the Krugs, and we know that. So here we want to quickly snack this. We don't want to stick around too much longer. We really should be going back to base. I do wish we should have... I do wish we gave up the first Skeletal Crab, but I think everything else would have played out the same. So that's good, right? Good movements by the Rakan. Like it. We shove it up. Guys, Hearthbound Axe. We do have to be careful. Level 6 on the Clud. He's moving down, so that's great. Now, do we want to actually shadow this here? Do we think we can do something about it? Obviously, got to track the vision. He just warded as. That's why I pressed that. He just warded as we saw him. Rumbles. Oh, <laughs> that's not a good one. Uh, we saw the ult, so we know we're seen anyway. It's better just to fully commit. Yeah. The, ooh, 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 ooh. Huge error here. Look at this. You're watching this, right? Watching this the whole time. Watch this. Watch it. See the swing down here? Why else would he swing down here? Probably warded. And you're watching this because this is clearly where we want to go. Just go for the gank. There's no reason to wait. Even if it is warded, isn't warded, was warded, will be warded in some sort of alternative future. We're just going here because we need to get the clad before that passive pops up again. Before Scar returns from being a coward. Activate your W. Let's go immediately. No hesitation. Because you haven't gone back to base here. You're also level 6 and I know why we're waiting for level 6. But I don't see why we can't fully utilize a full charm. We can flash in to get that. Hopefully, hate spikes and he lines up perfectly for this minion here, which you could also just kill anyway. But I, I feel like we should just go for the kill. Rather than wait for our six from the minion to die. Now we activate it, but now we can dash, get Skull back, and ult away into the night. Yeah, I feel like we should have been a lot quicker on that. I know we're waiting for six and so on, but I feel like really could have committed that kill there. Now we are six though, and we haven't gone back to base. I think this is just just too much now. I mean, we should be able to get the kill here, but we're just giving up. Look at this. This guy was under pressure, under stress, right? We kill him here. We take this. We go down to this quadrant. He tries to steal our stuff. Rakan roams with us to get another kill. Great. Thank you, Malzahar. We get the first RNG scuttle. We have a potential free kill on the on the Clud here. But now this guy is going to go and do his Krugs because it's the only thing on the map. Then he's going to go down here after we see him do this. He's got all of this available. He saw your top lane. What point? Sees your top lane. There, he should be going straight for your right and your raptors. Like, he could counter jungle the hell out of you right now, but he isn't. He should, but he isn't. He has a scanner too, so he could use it. Good pathing against the wall, always against the wall, right? Leave this. Against the wall, touch grass. Into this, take this. Keep your eyes on them, keep your eyes on this. But easily, some good counter jungling possible. For the Viego. 
because we didn't full commit. So now, from our perspective, we're still out with ultimate. Don't you want to use your ultimate on something that's going to guarantee you a kill 100%? Even if we get one here, I don't really care too much. Like the time reverse is just insane. You could have lost all of this. Now you're losing the dragon, which you should be losing anyway. Then you're going to lose the blue side quadrant counter jungle moment. Ah, uh, we got the kill. A lot of time reverse for a gank is an Evelyn. I, I think it's way too much. Because I think he should be dead already anyway. I feel like he should be dead anyway. I mean, you didn't even use your ultimate, so... It, now we're going down to this. We haven't gone back to base. This is Cardinal Sinner jungling. I don't care. There's extended sequences. And there's just dumb sequences. It's good to make the reads, right? Oh, they took the dragon. I can get the herald. Oh, you know, there's a guy top lane. I can take their grump. You know, like, this is good. But if the space between that is filled with dead time, you know, instead of bases, you end up in these situations where now if a fight develops over this herald, right, you're doomed. Now he is going to get your red side. Karthus decides to show up on the top side here. We're worried a little bit about some uh, show from the enemy team because we don't know what's going on. We have a base. Like, now we're just coin flipping this. You know, we're able to get it. We're going to waste our first ultimate repositioning most likely here or we're going to save it. Ah, uh, I think we should have saved it. I think we should have saved it. Or, or flash and ult in another direction than use your camera, but... It's a waste of an ult. We give him kills away. The Viego, yeah, he's done nothing. But he's taking your whole quadrant now. So a diamond level jungler, a diamond 2, diamond 1 level jungler, who didn't counter jungle you when you shot top lane without basing, just took his blue and then did the dragon, gets rewarded with your whole quadrant and a kill on the Ezreal. Yes, because we stay top lane for no particular reason. Huge. So I think this stagnation, this too long on the map, either first rotation, second, third, whatever, it doesn't matter. You could probably be on the map way too long uh, pretty frequently if this is the kind of stuff that you're seeing regularly. And even though he's 0 3 1, it's not because of our hand, it's his own hand. He's like, he did it to himself, <laughs> you know, pretty categorically. And even though we did some good stuff, uh, you know, we're just wandering the high seas. No active counter jungling. We're only, we're down a camp. We're down a camp. We're literally down a camp to this guy who should not be down. And we're hovering the Clyde and the Rumble for some curious reason. Like, you've got an Ezreal. you got an Ezreal Rakan against a Zaya Karthus. Abuse that bottom lane. Abuse it, really. Just take it out of the game. And even so, even if that's not your idea to gank the bottom lane, whatever you're doing, um, once you've gone top lane here and hopefully got in the kill because you weren't waiting for your ultimate or at least chunked him and forced his ult out, that's cool. You know, you go back to base. No, this is my red side. No, you're not getting this. You know, he could be on that right now, right? As soon as you first ganked in the top lane, level 5, and he sees you and you see him going down, he could easily be here, but maybe you can kill him on the Krugs. And then you can kill the bottom line. Then you can take this. Then you can push this off. Then you can take this as well. And then he's going to go for this. You just run across and kill him here because now you've got a Blasting One. Now you've got Darkseals. You've got Boots. Whatever you have from the, the first base. And now you can stay out a while. Not the first rotation, though. Because these camps are going to become harder and harder to take the longer you stay out now. However, ult is almost up. So we can start to do Evelyn things. And here's the thing about Evelyn. Especially Evelyn mains, and you guys know this. Um, my, my main channel first blew up with Evelyn and the rework guide. November 2017. Played a lot of Evelyn to make that guide, and a lot after that. Yes, you kind of stop CSing, and yes, you kind of start using the camouflage and the position to get these picks to make the game contour to your will. But it's not at... Five minutes or six minutes. It's not at eight minutes, right? You're still going to keep good sequencing decently. It's almost like you want to be on the trajectory to, for seven to eight CS per minute, and then it drops back down to your six minutes. Uh, sorry, six CS per minute because you stop farming a little bit, but you're so far ahead, you can just pick people up easily, counter jungle easily. Here's a good example. And. And if you start to kind of wander the high seas and not farm too early. You like the Econ to match the enemy jungler, who now will kill the Ezreal, hopefully, yes. 4.1k gold on the Viego, 4.1k gold on the Evelyn. The guy's 1-3-1. So much about sequencing, plates, objectives, shutdowns, cleanup kills, counter jungling, is just not being used by the Evelyn. And that's why it's an X-Master situation right now, stuck in Diamond. Is we're letting diamond junglers be equal to us in gold, even though they're 1 3 1, which should never happen. Like, you should be up 20 CS on him with this KDA, with no deaths, maybe one death will allow it. That tempo of control, that sort of game control, just doesn't exist. Too much uh, looking to be an Evelyn, 
It's the Kindred Syndrome that you see a lot. Nice kill there. Obviously, Vega's going to be rotating up to us. He's super low. Ignite. We get the kill there. Rakan, good job on the Ezreal as well. Chunking that from the bottom. It wasn't on screen. Tilea's now roaming down here with the Malzahar chasing. There should be a kill onto the Tilea as well. Hopefully, no one else can die, which is great. Huge. Huge swing for us. Very huge swing for us. We have the Herald, obviously, so we'll get some of the gold back. Now we're at 5.0, and he's at 4.4. Now, imagine if we're doing that the whole game. So, yeah. A lot of stuff to think about. Ezreal will get these plates. It's good. That so we'll get these one. That's fine. We know this. But if you wander too much around the map, just looking for picks randomly, you're going. You're having the Kindred Syndrome. So Kindred will get 10 marks in the game. Go next game and just start running around trying to use 10 marks. But you're at zero again. Evelyn, you don't have Rocket Bell Death Cap. You're starting from the ground again. You have to build up again. How did you get Rocket Bell Death Cap and 20 kills in the previous game? Not by playing like you were from 10 minutes to 20 minutes. First 10 minutes are important for you, that foundation. Sequence, know what to give up, focus on getting your six. Use your six in the good lane, that's a very easy kill where it's guaranteed doubles, especially bottom lane, maybe a mid lane, free setup for the Malzahar. Uh, maybe we can get a dragon, we can swap over to the, the Herald. If the enemy jungle is a bit of a gank kill, let him gank, kind of jungle him, take control of the game. We, it looked like we were doing that, and then we just kind of hung around way too much. Rakan presses the button to go in, they do get the dragon here, Rakan, this is over the wall. Mental wall, <laughs> as well as the W shred wall. Uh, Viego's activated his E. We have ult up in 30 seconds, so we have to be cautious here, but we get the full, full charm with the Malzar ultimate, but it is a Talia, it is a Zaya. They are pretty decently off here, the Zaya especially is very decently off. And that's why I was kind of saying, like, could we shut down that Zaya early? Could we path in that direction even? I like pathing up here because of the random level 1 stuff. But then give it up, do your stuff, do this again. Great, great, great. Capitalize on this gank, super good. Get the first RNG scuttle back to base. Defend from yourself from counter jungling. Use your ult on the bottom lane. Invade this sucker if he comes back down here again. Or do the dragon. Reset or cut across if you don't need to reset. Contest to make sure you get this herald. Then of course you can counter jungle here. You can fall back to this. You can use it here. You can use it here. You can go back to base and use it down here with your ultimate again. And you know you've got to keep that speed going. The denial, the ganks, and your self econ. The trifecta that makes you a jungler has to be quick, 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 quick. And we were just... Loitering around, and now we're down 30 CST of Viego. I mean, come on, down 30 CST of Viego. 5.1k gold to 5.8. This should be 2k gold lead, given this game. Should be 2k gold lead, but it isn't. Unlucky. Right, 5.14 on the Zaya. We've got a hyperfed uh, Carthus support 767. One of the things I never thought I'd be saying out loud, but it is what it is. Zaya has no ult, so this should, of course, be a free kill for us. There you go. See, now we can, you see? Now you can do this. Do a quadrant, shout around, sit in a bush, kill somebody, do it again, float to the next thing. Because you have good high econ and a CS lead, you can afford to just not farm for a little bit and just go kill people. Start farming champions. Farm CS before you farm champions. Don't try to farm champions before you can farm CS. Mm -hmm. Level 8 Karthus uses his flash. Tele's doing a good job making this very, very difficult. The yeah, in the meantime, is just farming, which... You look at his KDA and you're like, well, the guy's not had a good game. I agree with you. He hasn't had a good game. It's been a little rough. Very rough, in fact. But he's kept his own econ up. He's controlled his own jungle. He's not been counter jungle as much as he should have. And this should, in theory, be a dead Karthus. Trying to get both, we do. <laughs> nice position that Tilly didn't see that. Although... Nice flash W from the Viego there. Nice flash W into the auto Q. Doesn't pick up the soul because we ain't interested in dying. Objective is on the map. Let's go. Kill conversion ratio. We got some kills into the objective. Everyone was going to get the kills and just live and take our own camps. Also a big thing. So, again, when you are losing or having a rough game and shitty in the bed, which happens to all of us, first and foremost, control your own farm and econ because you can see from the Viego here, 6.4k gold to 6.8k gold. He's within touching distance. All that matters is the experience in the gold, and if you looked at the experience, he's up two levels. All stemming from this foundational principle early on. Let's come back to Biter. She may enjoy, <laughs> but not in this particular game. Right. Ult up in about 40 seconds or so. Viego is able to take this one. We're not able to hook around the corner. We do get the full charm onto him, though. He's pretty strong at this stage, but not strong enough to kill the Evan, because, again, she's still, she's still powerful. The champion's good, right? Rumble shows up as well. He's out of position and dies for it. 2-6-2. Two, and two. But does it matter if he's Viego and if he was up briefly two levels? More like what? Just over 1, 1 1.5, right? But still. Ezreal's done a good job on the bottom side. And it feels like it's got nothing to do with us. Yeah, we've helped out a little bit, but... 
a little bit of the coin flip. So this kind of play style can work really, really well, but it can also work really, really badly. So if you're noticing, hey, I'm losing two to three in a row, then I'm winning two to three in a row, then I'm, you know, going in these streaks in both directions. 100%, this is one of those reasons. Nice kill there, obviously. Diego's going to show up. No flash. Sonia's is used. There we go. Yet another kill. But he does so much damage, man. Woo! Karthus. Strong champion. Honestly, in this game, with this Evelyn, as Clud's roaming on down, you know, in and out using that passive. But you know what might be really good this game? I know that the, the Needless is good here. But I'm honestly thinking maybe we just have to go for the Banshees. One of those games where you've got the Needless and you kind of want to go to your death cap, yeah. But it might be prudent to go with the Banshees in a game where you're not quite in total control in terms of experience and gold as you would want to be versus that enemy comp. But the Karthus and the Tilly are shredding you or making it difficult for you to do things. And the Banshees will really give you more accessibility into the back line. Also able to tank his ultimate, right? If you haven't gone in and he ults, you're able to tank it. I think that's... Um, I, okay. I know Viego was there, but... Okay. We should have got it, but... Alright. <laughs> now we're in a bit of a rough spot here with the whole team. I, I'm trying to think. Like I'm thinking out loud a little bit. That's what I'm stuttering here. You want to steal this. Okay, you got Flash. But you got no vision. So you put that down. Alright. You should be going in right now. Like now you should be going in. There's no Viego, right? No Viego. So go in. Hit yourself a QE smite. And you got it. Yeah, you're going to die, but you'll get it. But then is it worth even dying? I think here, it's okay. Because it's 19 minutes. There's no Baron. By the time Baron's on the map, it's good. If it was 2021, and there's a really fed Zaya, and yeah, the whole team is inting, I might consider not doing it. I would just give them the third dragon because I know Baron's going to be up. And what I would do is I would give them this third drake, say, you guys, take your dragon. Take the third one. Off you go. And I'm telling my team, let's go, let's go do this. Like, let's run down and quickly do this Baron while they take the third dragon. I think that's a better play. Uh, but there's no reason why we should... Um, not get this and the reason why you see that it just gets rinsed at 1194 so we did have the smite available to do it that's why you go in a little sooner if there's no jungler you just want to go in and make sure you can hit the combo smite so we go in a little too late we hedge at 1800 instead of 2500 you know they, they don't see you over the wall so you would have been fine now though you're in a bit of a rough spot as i said s was coming over the wall the whole team is going to collapse in the situation s was Dodging in, Rakan's not even in the picture. I think we should have just run away. I think here you look at this, you're like, nope, and you run up and you just go kill the Zaya. Like you run out of the picture, you just kill the Zaya. I know we've got no ultimate, but maybe we can kill her anyway. Burn some some spells and run the other direction. At the very least. But what you don't want to do is die. Which we do. So they get the dragon, third dragon, good control. Again, that first dragon that he got was because of us. Remember that. We stayed too long topside, so he just took it. Because he saw us. He knew we could get it. Whereas he should have taken all of this. You roam him up, base, shadow, push off, he doesn't get it. So the soul and the elder aren't even things on the map right now, aren't even ideas in the game, because you denied the Viego the opportunity for objective control. He didn't get it because bot lane weren't in. As was doing a good job, right? Rakan was doing a good job for you. Rakan helped you a lot. So he only got it because of jungle. And that's what you got to remember. It's not always, it's not always just a straight up, my bottom lane didn't let us get dragons, my bottom lane. I know it is sometimes, but... Not in this particular case, yeah. Not in this particular case. So, we're going to shadow up to the top side. Maybe you think, oh, they're on the Baron. Nope. Karthus is just looking to set a trap here. Do think the uh, the Banshees will serve us well. But I understand why we go for Death Cap when we want to try and carry the game. But, you know, we, we have a lot of damage from the Ezreal. So, we still have enough damage to do the killings. But we'd be able to live a little longer. However, this is the way to smurf it up. If you are always sure your positioning is good and your timing for engages is good then by all means build your death cap then was iron just build damage as long as you know your positioning is good this is again like we're going all in on these on these clad moments it's not what we're looking for right it's not the pick we're looking for we should be ensuring that talia and zaya don't get to play the game at all and that for for talia that's where i like that banshee's bear right for the disengage she can't use a w on me uh she can't use um her E army and things like this. She's quite strong as well. 
Yeah, it's like we lack the kill potential. We're not really in a, in a place to be able to do it. I mean, obviously it is the Rakan's fault for being out of position. Our team's not in position. I get that, right? I get that. We're trying to push up here, but everything is a domino effect. There you go, you see? Karthus will have his button. Zaya kills you. You're going in by yourself. There's no real engage. You need the Rakan to do that, but he's dead. Yeah. It's kind of really collapsing in on itself right now, making it tough for you guys to do anything. Sad game. But again, credit to the Viego for at least keeping his econ highs. KDA was shit, but he didn't tilt. He made picks and made plays where he needed to. He was almost up two levels at one particular stage. He was numerically. Got all the dragons. Got this this Baron for his team. You could have shit KDAs, but still be having a solid game. When you look at the CS now, you're almost Flame Horizon. It's because you just wander around. The Evelyn just wanders around way too much, and a lot of you do this and a lot of low earless as well. You think, hey, I can make a pick, but at the end of the day, if your goal is 9.5, and he's up by 500, what if my CS was only down 20 to 30? You'd be, you'd have such a big gold lead that they would all perma die. So, don't know what we can necessarily do here. Zai is in the brush. There you go. But there. <laughs> Oh, it's, uh, Talia was in the brush as well. And again, that's why I like the Banshees here. It saves you, gives you a bit of a spell shield and something important. It lets you live long enough to make sure you get the kill. It's very important to think about the things. <laughs> you gotta think about it that way. I'm just... It's funny that Akarthus is doing this. 11 deaths, but, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Now they get the next soul point, I think. Yeah, we're just wave clearing. Get the soul point. We venture. See if we can make a pick. We do not do enough damage to make a pick. So, this build is great even in this game if you're up 2-3 levels, right? That's a whole lesson as well. When you're this far ahead, just build damage and it's free as well. I know people don't like the Banshee second Evelyn stuff, but... It means being alive to actually kill someone. But I don't think it matters in this game in particular. Prove our CS early. Don't roam too much. Make sure you're going back to base at a reasonable hour. Don't give away free dragons. Don't give away free counter jungling moments. Do some more counter jungling yourself. And obviously, think about your builds a little bit contextually with the game state and what the situation is. But if you are a diamond and you're playing like this Viego here, well done. This was not your better... Not your best game at all. You got shit on quite a bit, but you've maintained your gold econ. You did a good job getting objectives, and you were serviceable. You could help your team win, and that's all you really need sometimes to get to Masters. It's not the best games, right, that are the issue. It's when you have your worst games. Are you able to still win them, still be useful, play around WinCon? That's what gets you to Masters here. Thank you very much for watching. Ricardo GG for all your good stuff that you need. Become a monster jungler all right here. And as always, I will see you all in the next one.